going to show you an example of how you can actually add a lot of content in Google Earth. Let's click on New Orleans and we'll fly into New Orleans. Here we go. I'm going to be doing a project, so that's why this is sort of of interest to me. So here we are in New Orleans. Now, zoom in just a little bit. I head over the primary database. This is where we're going to find the New York Times down to gallery, open up gallery, and there's the New York Times. Now once you click in the box you'll see that the New York Times icon comes up and there's its balloon. These are the stories about New Orleans. Um, I decide to choose waiting for New Orleans. You can see there's a section and a location. After having browsed the article I return back to my original list and close down the balloon. If we go back over to the layers that Google Earth has provided, we can see that there's a lot of content that can still be overlaid on New Orleans. YouTube is all community created content and the folks that happen to upload this also geotagged it and so it shows up. In addition, if you go up to the geographic web, you'll see that there's Wikipedia and Panoramia. Wikipedia is represented and then you can link to the full article. Panoramia differs from Flickr in that it is a Google-owned product and has its own layer in the Google Earth database. Therefore, all images that are geotagged can show up in Google Earth. What's really worth noting here is the fact that we have content created both from the top down via the New York Times, the great gray old lady, and also from the bottom up, YouTube, Panoramia, and Wikipedia. The content we've seen so far has been both professionally created and community created, but what's common to it is that it all lives in the Google Earth database. But individuals and individual companies can create their own content that can be imported in. CBS News is a good example of that. Here's their balloon. And as with the New York Times, you can link back to cbsnews.com. When you're done, you just simply toggle off the layer and it also disappears. This is really the great mashup tool that's available to anybody and everybody. It requires no programming skills. Any news organization can use it. You don't need to be included in the database, but there are lots of layers that can be used in addition to whatever layer you create. These types of tools are the tools that journalists should be training on and should be using. I've been a new media and multimedia trainer for over 15 years and all of my experience tells me that it would take one day, eight hours, to teach 10 journalists how to create something akin to what you have just seen.